The Trader Cobb Crypto Show, talking business in blockchain. This show is proudly sponsored by Coinspot.com.au, with the largest range of cryptocurrencies anywhere in the Australian market. With an updated verification process, you can now be verified using only your driver's license or passport within seconds. You can instantly deposit funds and instantly start buying and selling your favorite cryptocurrencies in under five minutes. Coinspot are giving away $10 worth of free Bitcoin for each verified user once they make their first deposit. Just go to coinspot.com.au forward slash BTC123. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Trader Cobb Crypto Show. Today's guest, well, this man has got fingers in many pies, and I'm very much looking forward to digging into his very knowledgeable brain. First, I've got to say his name. It's Haik Hakobian. And That's he's great. going to talk to us. He's a business development manager at APAC at Nexmo. And we're going to cover what Nexmo does and what the objectives are. Also an advisor and mentor at SOSV. Yes, you can Google that and you will find the results. And also a partner at Prism Group. So as I say, a man with lots on his plate. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you very much, Craig. It's a pleasure to be here. Look, um, I want to kick straight off on a bit of your background, okay? So a little bit of an introduction on who you are and, uh, and also segue into what brought you into blockchain. You don't just do blockchain, but what brought you into that? Yeah, thank you very much. That was a good point. So I wear a few hats, as you just mentioned. Uh, one of them is that I'm in charge of business development at, at Nexmo, which is part of Vonage Group, the U.S. telephony company. Uh, my job is basically to um, get to new clients and get to new markets and basically help expand their communication capabilities, yep. not just telephony, but that's text, chat, video, etc. So uh, that's one of the hats I'm wearing. The other hat is SS Ventures, which is headquartered in San Francisco, also an American company. Um, what we do there is... Uh, so. SOSV, firstly, is the biggest PC accelerator in the world, um, has six accelerators globally, of which two are in Asia. Um, so my job is to basically help advise and mentor startups. And why I'm qualified or sort of in this position is because I had few, um, I had few entrepreneurial adventures of myself. Um, I had two failures and one exit before this, two failures in Egypt and one exit in Mozambique. So basically all of that happened in Africa. So that's why when I came to Singapore, I eventually got invited to be part of the 300 or so, I think, mentor pool that uh, SOSV has globally. And ever since around three years, I've been basically advising startups uh, across the world. And these are, by the way, later stage startups, so Series A or afterwards. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, and to your point, how I came to blockchain, uh, actually through SOSC, because I was, so this was sometime April or May um, 2017, and I was um, basically, I had three or four advisees, and two of them decided to do an ICO. Hmm. Uh, at that point, I had very little idea what an ICO, what blockchain, let alone what an ICO was. So because I was involved with them, for a year or so already uh, helping them with product and strategy. I asked them to sort of help me and educate me a bit. And because they went through the process, I was involved in that process and I sort of picked it up. And later in September, um, I was asked to, again, unofficially help what became one of the first ICO advisories in Singapore called Iconic Partners. Um, we at the time, so again, after hours work, right? So I was doing their white paper. So because I've been an entrepreneur myself and, and because of that, I was asked to help with the white paper. So what I did was I wrote the white paper for this company called Gifto. So Gifto, I think, is still considered the fastest ICO in Southeast Asia. Uh, no. They raised uh, 36 million in three minutes. Once they, uh, so their ICO was in December, 2017. Yeah. So I wrote the, the white paper. <laughs> Yeah, um, at the time, I mean, December 2017, as you as you know, as much as I do, was the peak for Bitcoin, peak for blockchain. Yeah. And they, they had a very successful ICO because this company already, already had around that time around, I think, 120 million monthly active users. So this is a virtual gifting company out of China. 
Um, so and then helped also Optoid, which is the third biggest app store. Uh, same, same, same thing. And also they ICO'd in uh, December 2017. So after that, started getting a lot of leads, and I that's how I sort of got really into blockchain, if you like. And uh, in January 2018, uh, a college, a university friend of mine was um, starting this this company, this advisory that eventually became Prism Group, and he asked me to basically be the partner in Asia, uh, which brings me to Prism Group. So Prism Group, what we do is events as well. So Prism is now considered, and I know a lot of blockchain people boast about this, but it's considered the top blockchain uh, economics and governance advisory globally. And why is it considered the top is because not only we have a lot of PhDs, uh, in economics from Harvard, uh, but also, so we enlisted a Nobel laureate in economics, Oliver Hart, uh, to be a senior advisor, and the former chief economist of Microsoft, uh, Preston McCarthy, uh, who is a very famous general because he has been a lot of mm. uh, publishing a lot of research papers. So he is also a senior advisor. So ever since we've had uh, a lot of engagements, I mean, a lot of events as well. We organized an event last July in Harvard Club, which was very successful. We had um, we have partnerships and tabs with MIT. Uh, for example, their crypto economics course that launched last July was curated by us. So MIT Sloan School of Business has a crypto economics course. We have also, I mean, we had recently, um, months ago, I think, a presentation at DARPA, so the Defense Advanced Research uh, Agency, uh, where we presented also about blockchain uh, security. So a lot of lot of engagements, mm -hmm. a lot of content, and a lot of events, you're right. So so all of this in blockchain economics and governance space. Um, so that's the three hats that I'm wearing. So part blockchain advisor, part uh, advisor generally, and, and doing also business development for, for Volnage Group. Wow. Oh. That was exhausting <laughs> just hearing what, you, what your intro was, mate. Look, I understand. And look, one of the things that fascinates me in, in, in business more than anything else is, is really ecosystems, all right? Now, when you're a startup, as you will know more than most, uh, it really is a race. It's a race to survival. It's a race to revenue. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of startups, especially tech startups, uh, they, their revenue models are a long way down the track. And we, we see this in blockchain and crypto assets now. Um, part of the, you know, some, some businesses that are, that are startups have revenue streams, but you still got to survive that startup period. You've got to carve out your space in the market. So it's a race for land, it's a race for survival, and it's a race for revenue. Now, because of this race, you do have a, there is a starting point. You don't know where the finish line is, however. Uh, the finish line can be very fast if your burn rate is high and your revenues are low and your investment is nil, right? So that's the difficult part of that. The way that you can bridge those gaps is by having multiple streams of income under the same umbrella, which brings in multiple partnerships and it brings in more experts and a bigger network. Now, what's the biggest key piece of advice when you're talking and working with a startup? What do you think is the biggest piece of advice or the most important thing that any startup should really be looking into to help them to win that survival race? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very good point um, because that's the, that's the million dollar question basically. <laughs> that any, any the reason why I'm asking you, mate. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So, so I think, uh, again, having talked to a lot of startups, um, the key, key race, I mean, there is two things. One is a pretty uh, normal standard advice that always look uh, for a competitive and sustainable advantage. So I deal with, let's say, a lot of startups that have, let's say, a marketplace for this, a marketplace for that. So but entry barrier or a possibility to copy that is very, uh, is very low, right? So anyone can do this. Anyone can create a startup. You hire an agency, you pay them, and they do that. But what you cannot um, create is uh, this kind of a, a, what you cannot easily replicate is that counterintuitively technological thing. So my key advice usually is, is for startups to look for a competitive advantage that's not necessarily technological, uh, unless it's patent pending technology. So if it's not technological, to give you an example, I mean, an obvious example such as Facebook, right? But Facebook is a social network and pretty much any, any, good agency can recreate what would be 60, 70% of capabilities of Facebook technologically, right? 
Yeah, yeah. Where you can see the news feed, you can post articles. But guess what? There aren't so many. Why? Because of the soft sort of advantages that uh, Facebook has, that has the economies of scale, has the network and stuff. So is that community, the economy of scale, et cetera, that prevent anyone else copying it, right? So my advice is usually to look for those things that are intangible, that are not technological, that are either network or community or something that are that is not easily replicable or copyable because that's the thing that's going to sustain you. Mm. Uh, that's one key piece of advice that I give. And uh, again, if you look across, as the same for Instagram, same for WhatsApp, there are a lot of messengers, but how many, there is maybe a few WeChat, WhatsApp, Line, Telegram, right? A lot of them, again, have technologically pretty much, and I oversimplify, but they are pretty much a messenger. I mean, it's not that difficult to create a messenger, but yeah, so to get all these people on board and keep them is the most difficult thing. And once you have them, again, to keep them there. So that's that's the kind of sort of an advantage that I always ask or help the startups to come up with, which is going to prevent future competitors or current competitors to get uh, to their to their to their piece of uh, piece of market. A uh, second advantage, second key point that I advise is create a serendipity. And what I mean by that is when like a lot of the cases, a lot of even new business ideas, business lines come up when you are, let's say, in an event, you meet someone who eventually becomes your partner that you wouldn't have otherwise met. So you go to all these events, you meet people. So meeting people, putting yourself out there, putting your content out there for some, some, for people to see. And then you get reached out, you get, I mean, look, I mean, you and I are a good example. I mean, you reached out to me out of blue. I, I didn't even know about you, right? And that's a serendipity that, again, like maybe I put some content or for some reasons, so yeah. you ended up finding my profile, right? So so creating serendipity, I think, is a very, very important thing because in my life also, as you realize, and I'm sure in yours as well, a lot of the opportunities, a lot of the things happen because you consistently do something in business or in life and you create this, like you go to network here, you put the content there, you talk to this guy, that guy, and then something comes that you wouldn't have otherwise guessed. So creating that Serendipity is very, very important because a lot of the cases when you do this consistently, you are always staying ahead, ahead of the game. And things always are going to happen with you because you are consistently creating those things that you are not going to imagine you will have. So these are the two sort of key advices I, I, get, I give. Uh, and I guess, I mean, startups are usually pretty happy. It's very, uh, again, just to, just to give you an idea, the reaction initially is like, huh, create serendipity, what does that mean? But when I explain, I give some examples like I did today uh, with you. Uh, usually they do this and they got back to me a number of times. Last time was actually like two weeks ago on one startup that I told them to, to go to an event and to have a specific way of pitching. So they did. And then a few partners came to them and said, oh, we didn't realize you guys are like this. That's your brand. That's yeah. your product. Let's partner up. And they were super surprised because they're like, oh, wow, we didn't realize that just pitching our startup pitch this way in this event is going to bring us this multinational company as potential partner. And hey, guess what? They did. Mm. So that's the same advice I would give, right? Um, so two things, sustainable and competitive advantage that's not necessarily technological and creating yourself a serendipity. Well, it's pretty good bloody advice. I'll give you that much. Well done. Thank you, by the way. Appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> I'm asking for me as much as anybody else. Now, yeah. I want to lead into SSOV a little bit with, with, with that as a segue, really. Um, you know, we, we've got television shows now about startups. We've, we've got the entrepreneurs uh, being more sexy now, as, as in it's, it's, it's something that lots of people, they say they are when they're not. So it's, it's, a, it's become a, a social movement of being an entrepreneur. A, there's a yeah. huge startup scene. It's cool to be a startup. It's cool to be an yeah. entrepreneur. Everybody wants a success of a successful entrepreneur. Not everybody's willing to put the work in and dedicate the time. So with that being the case, at mm-hmm. SSOV, you guys must be inundated with opportunity. Now, aside from how you find what you're looking for, do you currently have a focus on a certain part of the market, a certain industry, a certain sector that you're chasing after because you see that as being the biggest opportunity moving short, medium and long term? Yeah, no, that's right. And that's a great point. So we have, so as I mentioned, we have six accelerators of which two are in Asia. Yep. The two in Asia, one is called China Accelerator. It's called China Accelerator because it's in Shanghai and that's the 
that serves as an accelerator for companies globally that are yeah. trying to enter the Chinese market. Mm. So we have tie-ups with P&G, Johnson & Johnson, etc. A lot of companies, wow. uh, multinational companies, and they are also sort of, they are bringing their products and they're on the lookout for, for startups that are coming to China. So that one specializes in Chinese market. That's particular specialty and expertise in Chinese market with a network in China. Uh, the second one in Asia is mobile only accelerator. Um, that one is in Taipei, in Taiwan. This one is specialized in mobile applications. So those companies, those startups that have mobile applications that usually get accelerated in there and so on and so forth. So we have, for example, Hux, that's a hardware um, accelerator that's out of US, that's based out of US. So each of these six accelerators has a spe specific uh, vertical or or like we have Hugs. We have, for example, Biohack, which is um, also specialized in 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 bio-related uh, uh, startups. So each accelerator has either, let's say, uh, hardware. One is China. One is mobile application. So each of them has a specialty. Um, so that probably answers part of your questions about how do we go about having having sort of um, specialization or expertise. And, and secondly, you're right. I mean, we are getting inundated by, by a lot of startups. Um, uh, we have an advantage and we are by number of investments even bigger than 500 startups. We have an advantage over everyone else, including 500 startups, in that we provide great customer acquisition. Uh, what does that mean is that when you're a startup, usually later stage, you have thousands or hundreds of thousands of users. You want to, let's say, penetrate Chinese market. What you do is you come to us, we do our due diligence, we accept you, and we provide you customer acquisition, let's say, in Chinese market. Mm -hmm. How we do this is because we have tie-ups with Xiaomi, LG, a lot of original equipment developers or producers, as well as at any and a lot of the biggest mobile application advertising companies. So the way it works is basically once your startup is accepted, let's say, in China Accelerator, your application is being included in, let's say, an LG phone or um, as part wow. of mobile advertising network uh, across the world by one of the biggest companies. And because of that, you get a lot of free customers who certainly, they open their new LG as an example, and they yeah. see that your uh, application is part yeah. of the original applications on that phone. Um, so there's a profit share if and when there is a new customer, there is a profit share that SOSV um, sort of, sets up with, with the startup. But startup has to pay nothing for this. And the reason I sort of dwell on this is because as you know, for startups, the most important thing outside of the basically getting out their product and getting some funding is the customer acquisition. So we have that success. We have a lot of good startups, later stage startups coming to us because we provide customer acquisition for free. They have no downside, all the upside. Um, That's very interesting. I mean, that is, that's really interesting. A very, very, I mean, look, there's so many ways that that can be. I mean, I'm just thinking through my own head. We'll talk after. But that, I guess that's, I've managed to segue these questions beautifully. I've got, I'm just going to say that. And I want to move in the next mode now because that's really where that starts. So through that, you know, the story through SSOV, which is obviously the incubator, and then the, the client acquisition, which is the next part of uh, once you've got somebody inside of an incubator that you're going to work with, it basically mm -hmm. sounds like you're going to leverage off the next mode platform. So let's now start to have a little bit of chat about that because it is very much, well, there's a huge amount to it. So do you want to walk us through a little bit about what Nexmo does? I, I can see so clearly now how it works mm -hmm. into your ecosystem, but to walk us through a little bit about what it is. Okay. So Nexmo started in December 2010, uh, initially as an SMS company. So they would provide API functions. So API functions, think of it as uh, infrastructure or communication capability that you can build into your mobile application, marketplace, or website. Uh, you want it to have SMS capability sending back and forth, you can basically use Nexmos API uh, functions. So Nexmos started as an SMS company, uh, expanded over time using, uh, including voice, including chats like uh, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Viber, etc. And now Nexmo, and in 2016 May, Nexmo got a, acquired by Vonage Group. So it became part of Vonage Group. And ever since basically it has been adding communication capabilities. So Nexmo, as it stands right now, is a communications capability uh, company. It provides communications 
whether that's text, that's voice, that's chat, that's video, that's email to your company. And it's not an end product, it's a B2B. So basically, if you have, let's say, a, a website, a, you are an e-commerce company, uh, you build, you use those communication capabilities to build into your e-commerce product so that it's able to, for example, use video identification or it's able to send an SMS notification to someone who is shopping on e-commerce company. So Nexmo is basically providing that, that capabilities, those capabilities for different companies on different mobile applications. Um, now, my work at Nexmo centers around opening new markets in Southeast Asia because I'm based out of Singapore and, and uh, working with different big accounts. Uh, so we're dealing with a lot of banks, a uh, lot of insurance companies, um, companies like Google, Facebook, Alibaba, Baidu, they are all wow. partners. And in case of Google and Facebook, uh, they are also our, I mean, they are clients and our partners at the same time. So we service pretty much uh, uh, the biggest companies in the world as well as startups. Um, uh, because everyone, want, whether you are a small startup or yeah. you are a big company, you do need communication. I mean, we, we have a pitch usually. I, I have a pitch actually that I, when I talk to a company, I'm like, do you have communications with your companies? Do you communicate? They're like, yes. Uh, do they respond back? Yes. In that case, I'm sure we can value it because every type of communication that you imagine, whether that's text, that's voice, that's email, or, uh, or video or chat, we provide. So we mm. can help you. We can provide this kind of communication. Right. Um, and, and believe it or not, I mean, when I got into this industry, I couldn't imagine communication makes so much difference, but it does make a lot of difference. A lot of difference. I mean, I just can't overemphasize how much difference it makes for a bank. I mean, you would think bank banking a product, but without communication, none of, this is, none of their product is going to be out there. None of their products is going to be used properly. And I just realized to which extent makes more and companies in the same industry help. Yeah. Um, so I really love doing it also because it's just communication, which seemingly is a small thing for a lot of companies, unless you're specialized in communication. Small thing as it is, it makes such a big difference for a lot of companies in any industry. And unlike, unlike let's say, a company uh, that provides one type of product, let's say you are an ERP company, you just go after big multinationals and there is one or two use cases or ways of using your product. In our case, communication capability, when you provide a capability, not an end or like tangible product, there is so much uh, of creative sort of thinking you have to do with the startup or with the multinational company because sometimes they don't realize they can use communication in specific ways. So you go brainstorm with them, say, what about that? The best practice in your industry is that they use this way on that way. And for example, SMS can be sent from that point, or you can have this kind of, like this kind of, for example, voice communication that's very normal in your industry. And they're like, oh, wow, I didn't even know that you can do that. So we help them come up with this kind of thinking and then they implement our capabilities into their products or their services. Wow. There's, um, I mean, that's a big business. <clears throat> that's a very yeah. big sector, a very, very big business. And I mean, that's, that's right. Very interesting. I mean, that's, I would suggest that's probably where a lot of your time is taken, given that you've got big clients and it is what it is. Now, the last thing I wanted to touch on is, is back to Prism Group. I think you kind of answered it at the beginning. My mm. question basically centers around, obviously, there's event, a lot of events that gets put on through, through this group. <clears throat> is there any particular, uh, again, market, sector, industry that you're seeing the most growth because I, I see events being a good indication of grassroots growth. So if there's lots of events, you, typically events go before the rest of the market catches a hold because the events occur for us to get together, to create the ecosystems, to do business partnerships and to grow that space up. Now, from that point of view, um, what are you seeing is, is one of the fastest growing events markets in the world at the moment? Um, events markets, uh, well, I guess unsurprisingly for you, I think that would be blockchain, at least in this region. <laughs> um, I, I think the underlying sort of rationale is that whenever you have the kind of industry, new revolutionary type of industry like blockchain or AI for that matter, or edge computing, when those industries are sort of being, uh, they are being born and they are being, they are growing as they are right now there is a need for a lot of information creation and sharing, right? So 
blockchain is do this industry where a lot of this information is created, a lot of projects come up, a lot of new developments happen, and to get that across everyone in the ecosystem of small, uh, small players, small startups, as well as big companies, there are a lot of events. Um, so uh, there are a lot of events on blockchain. I mean, I can tell you, you can yeah, check yeah. some website every day. There is at least an event in Singapore, at least one event. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot. Of, there are so many concurrent events. Sometimes you don't know to which one, uh, which one you should be, you should be attending. So blockchain definitely is a very big market in terms of events. Um, AI is another. Uh, yeah, in totally Southeast really Asia, is not as mature as US, but yeah. it started, I think, last year, mid last year. There's more and more uh, of AI related events. Uh, again, I think, I mean, it's, it's the, the rationale is the same, right? So the moment you see a bit of technological development, there are some successes, business successes. A lot of events get created because that's how the information is created and disseminated across the, in the industry. Yeah. And uh, for us at Prism, I mean, we have seen. So last year, we were basically agnostic in terms of companies we went after and events uh, Events we didn't spend that much time doing, uh, I can tell you. This year, it's about enterprises. Uh, so we're going after uh, big multinationals. Um, and we had a keynote at South by Southwest, actually two keynotes, two of our team members spoke, and we have a keynote at Consensus um, in May. Uh, so there, there, is, there, there, there is a lot of events that we get invited to. Um, uh, we provide also webinars. Uh, we curate a lot of content, as I said, for MIT, University of Southern California, et cetera, a lot of, a lot of universities. So we try to, again, participate in this industry through our own events, as well as also to go to some of the uh, like leading events in the industry, technology industry, technologies, different technologies, but especially uh, like blockchain, because that, that's where we are specialized in. Yeah, okay. Well, look, I could literally talk to you all day. I, I really could. I'm, I'm fascinated like, speaking with someone with your experience, your knowledge. And, and yeah, I, I literally could speak to you all day, but we can't do that because we've got to respect the wishes of the listener. So what I'm going to do right now is just suggest, where, you, where can we find out more about what you're doing across your different groups or is it you personally? How do we find out and connect into you? Yeah, um, but you can visit my uh, website. I... Uh my girlfriend sort of uh, was the one who insisted I, I do have a website because before I just said all these things. So my website is Haikha, so H-A-Y-K-H-A dot com. I mean, and you, there you can see sort of all these different things tie up together in some way. Uh, you can see all the different companies and partnerships that I I have and, and some of my interests and I blog. So you can find some of my blog articles. I blog about blockchain, blog about AI, I um, used to blog about failures because I think failures are the most uh, impactful type of uh, uh, teacher, uh, more so than success. And so basically, yeah, uh, my website. Again, Excellent. it's haika.com, it's, it's so H-A-Y-K-H-A.com. H-A-Y-K-H-A.com. I've written that down. Correct. Listeners, viewers, do the same. Go check this man out. He knows what he's talking about. He's very connected. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show, Hake. I thank you so thank much you. for your Great. time. And I look forward to bumping into you at some events sometime, mate. It'd be really great to catch up and, uh, and waste about six hours of your time asking you a thousand questions. <laughs> yeah, pleasure. Absolute pleasure, Craig. And uh, as you said, I mean, it will be really great to actually meet you in person and talk the whole day about all this other thing. <laughs> thank you very much, Craig. Excellent. Thanks very much. Ladies and gentlemen, have a fantastic day. Bye for now. This show is proudly sponsored by coinspot.com.au with the largest range of cryptocurrencies anywhere in the Australian market. With an updated verification process, you can now be verified using only your driver's license or passport within seconds. You can instantly deposit funds and instantly start buying and selling your favorite cryptocurrencies in under five minutes. Coinspot are giving away $10 worth of free Bitcoin for each verified user once they make their first deposit. Just go to coinspot.com.au forward slash BTC123. Views are of the advertiser, not TraderCobb or the audio presenter.